Hey, I made a quick video on setting up Defender for Endpoint from an next live course that I'm doing on the Academy. And I spotted a question on YouTube about this particular button, which says Microsoft Intune can enforce endpoint security profiles and configuration via supported agents, independently of the device being managed by MDM or Config Manager. And the commenter pointed out that this is actually quite a confusing setting and the tooltip doesn't really give much away as to what it's for. And in fact, I think most organizations will have this enabled with absolutely no idea what it's for or why it's set to enabled or not. Let me explain what it's for and how it's used. Let's say we've got two devices. One of them is managed by Intune and one is not managed by Intune. It's just a group policy managed device. It could be even managed by a different MDM or a conflict manager, for example, but it's not Intune managed. Let's say we've got 2,000 of these devices in the organizations that are managed by Intune, the traditional way of managing a device via Intune. And then we've got 50 or so that are managed by this different MDM or group policy. For some reason, they can't be managed via Intune, right? So the security team really don't care about the management platform. They want to make sure their security policies are enforced across our devices. They want them to be enforced using the same mechanism, ideally, so Intune was chosen as the way to deploy security configurations for Defender for Endpoint for all of your devices, all those 2,000 devices managed by Intune. Wouldn't it be great if we could also push that configuration via Intune for the non-Intune managed devices? And the person who commented on YouTube said, well, how is that even possible? How is Intune going to deploy a configuration when the device isn't enrolled? It won't even appear in the portal. So let's talk about how this works. I'll show you the two devices first, right? So we have on the left-hand side here, we've got client four. This is intra joined and managed by Intune. Okay, perfect. It's also onboarded into MDE or onboarded into Defender for Endpoint. On the right-hand side, no, on the right-hand side, let me close that down. We have our um, other device, which is just, M just group policy managed. It is not in Intune at all. It is also onboarded to MDE though. So I onboarded it to MDE via the script or maybe via group policy, however you want to do it. It's onboarded into MDE. I'll show you the Defender for Endpoint section here. So if we go into uh, devices, you can see I've got client for this Azure AD joined Intune managed device is here in my Defender for Endpoint portal and client one this domain join device, not Intune managed, is in MDE. MDE always supported that anyway. That's not a new thing at all. So let's say we want to push some configuration to these devices. We can go into endpoint security, down to antivirus, for example, and let's look at the basic antivirus policy that I've got here. I'll show you that it's deployed to all devices and the configuration I've chosen to set, it's really basic, right? It's um, disabling archive scanning, turning cloud uh, cloud protection on. I've also put in a exclusion path here of demo exclusion path just as a, as a demonstration. And like I say, I've deployed that to all devices. That will include all devices that are managed by Intune and also managed by Defender for Endpoint. Let me show you how this works. When a device is onboarded into Defender for Endpoint, it sits in this list here. Now, if we want Intune to be able to manage the security configuration, we need to do a couple of things. The setting that this person was talking about on YouTube, if we go into tenant administration, down to connectors and tokens, down into defender for endpoint, there is a different way to get here, but that's just the one I'm going to use for now. You can see we've got this, this button here, which is what the one that they were confused about. Allow Microsoft Defender for Endpoint to enforce endpoint security configurations. Now it's set to on for me because I've set it to on because I want to use it. If you're not using it, you probably shouldn't set it to on, right? But the tooltip says that Intune can enforce endpoint security profiles and configuration via supported agents independently of MDM and Config Manager. So it's set to on. When you set this to on, you also need the corresponding Defender for Endpoint setting to be set to on. I'll go into uh, Defender for Endpoint, down to Settings, Endpoints, and then down to Enforcement Scope, just here. And you can see I've got a setting here, use MDE to enforce security configurations from Intune. It's set to on. And when you have that set, you also get to choose which clients you're supporting. In this case, I'm supporting all Windows clients. Now in the course, we talk about how to tag them with 
uh, MDE management so we can pilot this, but this is just a general explanation of how we use this. So I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. So that's now configured. So now Intune and, and MDE are communicating and managing devices independently of each other and, and supporting each other through that configuration. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If we go up into assets and devices and choose our client four, you can see on the left hand side, we get a load of information, including the exposure score on the right hand side there. It's onboarded, which is set here. And if we scroll down a bit more, you can see it's uh, device management is managed by Intune and MDE enrollment status is not applicable. Now this is weird because it is enrolled into an MDE, right? Technically not, it's onboarded into MDE. And remember the difference between enrolled and onboarded. Onboarded is what you do to get a device onto Defender for Endpoint. Enroll is what you do to get a device into MDM. And if we click on this tooltip, it says, this is all about enrolling it into security configuration management, which is the thing we're talking about right now. So this particular device managed by Intune and onboarded into MDE is not going to have any status here. But back over to our device inventory, scrolling down to client one, we have onboarded because it's an onboarded MDE device. We're going to scroll down and we'll see that managed by is now MDE for this device. So it's managed by Defender for Endpoint and MDE enrollment status is success because it's successfully enrolled into Defender for Endpoint management. So that security policy that I showed you in Intune, well, click on security policies here and you can see that basic AV security policy has been deployed and is successful. That information is also available in Endpoint Security antivirus, basic AV policy, and those two devices that are assigned. You can see we have client one for the system account because there's no user that Intune knows about logged into this device and client four because that's an Intune managed device that was always going to work. So if we go over to the device itself, this one here, and over to security, Windows security and take a look at some of the settings of virus and protection settings. So we've got real time protection on. We have cloud delivery protection on because I set that. Tamper protections on because it's onboarded into MDE. And exclusions wise, uh, let's log in. We have a demo exclusion path. The one I set in the Intune configuration for this device is set and correctly deployed to that device. So this device is not managed by M by Intune, but is fully managed by MDE from a security perspective. And go back over to here into device inventory, and you can see we've got a load more information about this device. For example, we have the software inventory on this device. This information is pulled directly from Defender for Endpoint. We have vulnerabilities that are picked up from this device all by enrolling this device into Defender for Endpoint, not even touching Intune from a management perspective. It's pulled all this information back. And we can even do really clever things like running an antivirus scan, restricting app execution if we think there's some kind of issue going on with this device from a malware perspective or from a, from a threat perspective. We can do live response. We can do all the stuff Defender for Endpoint could do, even though we haven't got management of it via Intune. We can also do a policy sync. Now, if we trigger a policy sync, this will take effect within 10 minutes. But MDE by default does its policy synchronization every 90 minutes or so, rather than that eight hours that Intune takes to refresh its policy. I think this is a good way of managing endpoint security. I think it's a great advancement in how we can manage security for our devices, even for, dev for, for types of operating systems that aren't supporting Intune. Taking that a step further, this works for servers, right? For Windows servers, we can manage endpoint security via Intune using Defender for Endpoint. That is massive, right? That means we can now use Intune to manage security configuration on servers. It doesn't work for domain controllers yet because of a, a weird quirk around en enter ID, but that apparently is coming in the future and might have even changed very recently, but I haven't read up too much on that yet. So, 
yes, I think this is a, a fantastic advancement. I hope that helps you understand a bit more about what that button means in Intune and why it would be set to yes or no. Take a look and see if you're using it correctly in your environment. I hope that helps. See you next time.